Alrighty, back again for episode two. I think I'm going to redesign my Dreadnought in this one while the game's paused. Because as I stated before about fleet strength not being totally representative of actual combat effectiveness, that was perfectly demonstrated when my 4K Dreadnought got destroyed by that 2K Remnant over here. So my Dreadnought is in desperate need of redesign. I wish I could have seen the battle happen so I could see where the damage was coming and getting through most easily, but I imagine it's because I have too many weapons up front and not enough armor. Turn on firing arcs so I can see how this is going. Now I'm using mostly ablative because it's lighter. I like my ships to move faster, but that's probably also what had it die. Ablative is good against a lot of small hits. It's that damage resistance stat over here. It that means it reduces any damage that hits this tile of armor by four down to like a minimum amount. I think it's like, I don't know, I'd have to google it again, I don't remember. But it doesn't, it's not able to take a, a shot down to zero damage. But anyway, it would subtract four from the damage of whatever shot hit it. Which is good for a lot of tiny shots from fleet ships. But not so much from other capital ships. Reactive armor is good f against missiles because it, because missiles are a single really powerful hit, and reactive armor takes any damage that it hits it above the damage threshold and reduces it to the damage threshold. So at 17.9, if a missile that was going to deal a thousand damage hit this tile, only 17.9 damage would actually be dealt which is still most of the health of this armor hex, but at least that protects it from instantly spearing through the entire ship. But then of course it does, it has less overall health than at 19.8 than regular armor, which has small amount of damage resistance, but not as much as ablative. Reactive actually has less health even than ablative. as the drawback for its damage reducing capabilities. So probably just take the hit to speed and replace this with regular armor. And maybe put reactive on these spots. Because damage is applied in straight lines in this game. So if somebody is attacking from the front if they're slightly below, it'll go in this kind of a line. If they're slightly above from the front, it'll go in that line. But it's always in straight lines. So you want to protect the core pieces of your systems, because those, if those are taken out, the entire system becomes inactive. And since the reactor produces power, which is needed to fire the guns and the lasers and keep the fleet in order. If that gets taken out early on, this guy's basically done for. So putting the reactor up front at all is probably was a bad design choice on my part. I 
don't think I'm going to bother fully redesigning the entire thing, though, in order to move it. Because the dreadnoughts are not going to get a whole lot of use in the late game once I unlock different uh, hull types. It's basically just going to be a spam ship if I'm trying to take over a, like a dozen enemy planets at the same time. Just make like a dozen of these guys and throw them out. So they're not going to see too much heavy combat. So I think I'll just stick with this armor change. Maybe switch up there where the lasers and stuff are pointed to get a little better overlap on their arcs. Don't want to restrict the firing area too much. Yeah. Take these guys both in a little bit. So everything's overlapping a little bit. Can I fit an armor piece in there without just restricting it too much? Eh. Not really. It might be worth it though, just so that I can't hit it from the sides. The guns will have to, ship will have to turn more to shoot at people, but. Oh well. Alrighty. I think that's all I'm gonna bother with for this guy. So let's get back to it. Yoko are just taking over our galaxy. Build some more pops. Some reserve. Okay. Oh, yeah. How's... I'll put on my filters, military ships, civilian ships. What? Who are you? Oh, the freaking Hunan are already that far out? Son of a bitch. That is definitely not good for me. Got to populate some of this stuff real quick so that they can't take it. Ah, oh, I'm out of FTL. Some defense generation. Man, that is bogus. Well, how much is it going to take to terraform these into something useful? I can afford it. Ugh, can't afford textiles, though. Yeah, terraforming is a little overpowered, in my opinion, and my friend's opinion. We normally play with it deactivated, but it's on by default, so it's just... So at least let people see what that's like. It allows you to just use money and labor to turn any planet you want into one of these basic resources, basic Mark I resources. Chemicals gives you research, explosives is defense, natural gas gives energy, plastics gives uh, influence, textiles is more money, which is why it's the more expensive option, so that you can't just infinitely make more money cheaply, and titanium is labor. A 
both plastics and give us a little more influence power. Man, I'm gonna have to build a few more scouts, re scout the area. If they're populating those planets, then they already ha have a bunch of this stuff here. They might already have conquered the middle entirely. Not really conquered, there's not anything there, but you know, populated it. Oh. They built that asteroid, so they definitely have most of this stuff already. Yeah, like I said before, expansion is the one of the weaknesses the Mono have. Since you have to build your own population, it takes a lot longer to expand. Just tell my scout to fly through some of these systems, get me an updated view of what's going on in there. One of the really big downsides about this game is that there's no way to tell your scouts to automatically re-scout a location if you, after you've explored it the first time. So that all comes down to manually telling them to do it, which is time-consuming and kind of annoying. Oh, gosh. Oh, there's even Oko stuff out there. Son of a bitch. I'm going to have to build up a lot of military very quickly here. Oh, plastics are done. Get that going. I'm just going to have to convert all these useless resources into stuff I can beef my empire up with. Ooh, accidentally over did that. Alright, so how much labor? 14. We'll get this guy to start terraforming some of the planets in his own area. Oh, terraforming is actually a lot cheaper in your own star. That's another good use for gates because it makes that bridge thing happen. You can actually afford straight textiles for some more money. I think I'll go with defense generation. You terraform this guy. Do some defense. You can terraform the stuff in here cheaply. Let's get us some. Ooh, not as cheaply as being in the same system, but cheaper than it could have been. Uh, what should I get? I can't really afford any of it right now until the cycle turns over. Son of a bitch. Man, they've taken everything. What's down here? Take these real quick. Oh, I'm out of FTL again. Man. But this isn't good because now... Now I'm going to be at war with potentially two people at the same time who are both much more established than I am. But it should be okay as long as they don't send too many fleets immediately. Okay, none of this stuff's been taken yet. So that's still potentially mine. Ugh. Oh no, the space pirate. He runs around killing civilian ships. And somewhere in the depths of space, he has a pirate horde, and if you kill it, you can get a bunch of cash, but, you know, finding it is a bit of a bitch. Defense. Okay. This one's 
done. I need more population. Phasite gives you more research points based on the number of population in the system, or on the planet, I mean. One research for every five. In addition to producing two research pressure on its own. Okay, this explosives is ready. Materialism would probably be good. Because one of the benefits is that it makes borrowing money for the next budget cycle not cost any additional money. So I'll remove the sort of penalty for going over budget. All I gotta do for this one is pump money into it. So I'll get collectivism for now, so I can get the benefits from all these asteroid mining bases I can build. So I can build those pretty quick since I only have, they only have labor cost. going. Mm, profiteering would be good. Oh, well, oh, let's see if I can get it when it's cheaper. Someone else is probably going to snipe it immediately. This spends influence points to give you some money. Ah, yep, they instantly bought it. That's one of the troubles fighting against computers. They have instantaneous reaction times. What's going on over here? Ah, oh, they already... They've already taken all of that. Okay, good. Okay, I need more military quickly. Construction, I'll put those over here. Speed up their building of these a little bit. Oof. But since the Hunan and the Oko are next to me now, or is these all Hunan? Okay, these are all Hunan. Hopefully they're not too powerful in diplomacy to start annexing all my planets. Because fighting that will be quite difficult for me. Increase pressure capacity of all planets. Increase labor generated by factories, which won't affect me at all, but whatever. This is the big one, though. Level 4. Discover new random asteroid every 5 minutes. So that just means that a new asteroid could be an ore asteroid, could be a resource asteroid, will just appear somewhere in my territory every 5 minutes. Uh, how much money have I got? I'll get another battleship going. Some beam ships. Ooh, our ecology's good. 
Increase max population of a planet by 10. Should be a bit of a big deal. Uh, let's spy a bit using a telescope. What is that? Oh, okay, that's a ship. I thought it might have been a space station of some kind. Well, this is Hawkward. Discovered the first. Morphic. Over here. This guy needs another pop. Put some more money pressure on. Build a city to support it. Well, I do have influence and energy generation on this planet. No research generation, though. I think I'll just go with a metropolis instead of a mega city. It's cheaper. Might be over pressure even with the population though. So we'll give it a metropolis too. Battleships ready. Got a full complement. Mining some of these asteroids just for later use. Oh, research, research. Uh, wanted to go for a Star Forge. And self destruct devices are really powerful too. So I th but I'm. I am anticipating being at war very, very soon. So I am going to pump my research over to the simulator, which is a pretty powerful device if you take advantage of it. It allows you to, if you put a simulator onto a ship, it'll gradually gain experience increasing its veterancy without it having to actually experience combat. Then... from there... Spend money to get that guy. Destroyer hull would be really nice for war. Bombs would also be excessively good for war, because they're almost overpowered with how ridiculous they are. Ooh, activated the engine of the Revenant. Revenant parts are interesting things because they give you special benefits for having them active, but the worst part that I'll have to keep an eye on is that if somebody, man if a single empire manages to activate all four pieces of the Revenant, then they gain access to the Revenant ship, which is just an end game, like kind of a you win now condition. It's like a super giant ship that's pretty much invincible. Pretty much the only way to kill it is to have it is to trick the AI into sending it into a system that you already have weakened the star in, and then killing the star and letting the ship get destroyed by the supernova. That's pretty much the only way to kill the Revenant. Okay, as long as nobody's annexing my stuff. What's this doing? 
and some profit. Build more pops with. How am I versus the Hunan? Militarily, I'm equivalent to them. Oh no, right. I'm considered weak. They're considered average. So they're better than me. Militarily. But their big factor comes from how much more territory they've got than me. I can expand this way pretty freely. Any remnants up here? Yes. Ooh, 16k remnant. Oh yes, these terraformings are done. I don't need four there. Let's uh, go. So textiles, give me a little more money income. Activate the cannon too. Shit. Yeah, the Oko always dominate games unless they get a really crappy starting position, but it seems like they got a pretty good starting position in this game. Let's go kill some remnants. Photo planet. We'll see what that is in a bit once we rescout the area. Spice and FTL shards. Build some more asteroids. now. We've got room for more. Oh, simulator's going. Already down here. Get some destroyer haul. I'll research that instead of buying it, because I need my money right now. Build 
build a gate. To make terraforming these cheaper. Yeah. For now, I'll just keep building population. So it's almost done with the textiles. Who's got extra pops? Got a couple. Textiles. This is energy. Okay, the SAR have the have one of the other revenant pieces, so I shouldn't have to worry about the Oko getting the revenant anytime soon. That would be catastrophic. Especially because Star Destroyer technology is way the hell out over here. I've got better things to do. Cause it may look like I'm researching shit really quickly right now, being able to just go pchoo, pchoo, pchoo. But research slows down the more of it you've produced. So I'm, my research is going to start slowing to a crawl pretty soon here with how many techs I've unlocked. But now i got a simulator. I can start s simulating. Because ships with higher veterancy have a lot more power. This guy's got one veteran C and now he's like twice as strong as he was. Yeah. Some knowledge. Gain influence points. Well, that became a titanium. the game and start designing a simulator ship. Flagship. Mm, we'll make it size 200. And this guy's only purpose is going to be to sit there becoming more powerful. There's simulator, so I'll just need one little bridge, and the rest of him is just going to be a simulator.
actual look of it doesn't matter in any fashion, it's just that the silhouette of a ship on the galaxy map is determined by its original design's look. So after it gets retrofitted, it's not going to change. Like the, the zoomed out icon. So it looks like the shape of the ship, but after it gets retrofitted and the design changes, the icon is still going to look the same. So I don't want to have a bunch of floating blobs running around. But rather it look kind of cool. Insufficient control, huh? One more little piece of bridge on there. The thing I'm doing right here actually falls into the category of exploit. It's not technically cheating because this simulator ship is a mechanic that was intentionally put into the game by the developers, but this is not how they intended it to be used. So this is basically going to give me a super-powered ship far beyond anything I could have normally built at this point in the game for very little effort. This is the kind of strategy I use against my friends on occasion, but they know about it so they're always hunting these down wherever they are to kill them before I retrofit them into anything. The AI, though, doesn't know how to do that. So against AI, this is, like, right on the edge of basically cheating. Now for these, though, as a way to curb people retrofitting stuff a whole lot, when a ship is retrofitted, its veterancy levels are halved. So, or rather its experience, which is needed to get veterancy levels, is halved. So I'll have to let this guy get up to like 10 veterancy before I retrofit him or else he's not going to be any not particularly much stronger than he would have been otherwise. Ships. Sim ship. Forty labor, just a few minutes. <coughs> Excuse me. Alrighty, got that going. I gotta keep focusing on expanding. Oh yes. Get you to terraform this guy into... I think more... Uh, we'll go with... more explosives. Can't go wrong with more defense generation. Still not trying to annex me yet, so that's fine. Got some diplomacy points built up. Next planet could come in handy. Oh, it can enhance this name planet. Now it would increase the population of a planet by a lot. Aw oh, man, the Hoonanner. I've declared war. Shite. Shizzity, shizzity, shite. You are going to be needed. Mm. Some labor. Oh, these 
these asteroids didn't get used up fully. So, labor, labor, labor. We'll send it all to the home world, because why not? Should I build? Defense station would be nice. Yeah, we'll build a defense station. In case they decide to come from a home world. There's the sim ship. It has no engines, so it can't move. So it'll just sit there gaining XP indefinitely. And now the amount of experience a simulator gives to a ship is dependent on the size of the simulator, which is why I maxed out its tile space as nothing but simulation. The way that they intended that to be used is just to incorporate a few tiles of it into the middle of a normal design so that in in the downtime between wars, your ships are still gaining veterancy, but hey, we can think outside the box here. Alright. Research. Keep going for the Star Forge. Our defense platform. Just a whole bunch of guns and armor. Okay. Ooh, got a buster machine. That might be useful. Taking out enemy planets. If I can't conquer them, save that for later. Let's terraform this guy into something useful while well, I've got the money to do it. Let's get more energy going. This guy's over pressure. So I, all these guys are over pressure. I need to get more Mark II resources to export them to. I suppose for now I can just build a metropolis on all of them. That won't even be enough to get all this labor pressure. At least we'll have more. Ooh, biting into the next cycle. Well, the Faye got the Senate leader position back. Oh, well, haven't sent any ships yet attack me. They will soon, there's no doubt about that. How am I against them now? Still weak. Oof, they've apparently been building up since they declared war on me. Shite balls. He's already at three times veteran C. Peace offer? Sure, why not? That's one of the schizophrenic things that the AI likes to do. We'll declare war, but then if they don't feel like, or if like somebody else, oh wow, they are about to start taking me over. That makes it even weirder that he offered peace, but whatevs. 
He must be starting to clash with the Oko. And since they're a bigger threat than me, he wanted to make peace with me so he could focus on that. Let's get some more scouting going. See what the Nilly are up to, or if they're just completely dead in the water. <laughs> He's Tokyo drifting along. That's one of the... Ah, oh, he's going to hyperspace. So yeah, one of the things this game has is momentum. So if you're telling your ships to go to a place, and then suddenly you change their order, they'll immediately start trying to go to that new location. So they'll just kind of start swinging around until their momentum cancels out, and they can start going there. It can be really annoying if you're trying to tell your ships to turn around all of a sudden. Or build another one. Only problem with these sim ships is that the way retrofitting works is that you have to redesign the design itself. So I'll have to come up with a design on the fly. I can't just say, turn this into that. That gives me a few more minutes to build up, now that they're not deciding to be at war with me. speed at which, even though it's going to slow down eventually, the speed at which I'm able to burn through the tech tree is one of the reasons that my friend and I usually play with a mod that multiplies the cost and unlock time of every tech by ten times. Makes research a little bit less of an instant game changer, but also makes it a lot more important because then the direction you go in and the text you unlock are significant as opposed to just, oh, I want this, I feel like having this right now. Is it all bought? Five times. Need to unlock flak batteries to import my destroyer design. So I'll queue that up. I'll unlock those with energy. get out to that stuff. Build a gate out here. Ooh. I'll get 
get some pops building. got done. Can't afford it right now. Put another mega city on the home world in a minute here. So yeah, the rate at which a, a planet's surface produces uh, developed tiles is dependent on the current population as well. So planets that are at their maximum population and have larger populations will develop tiles more quickly. And this stuff will even happen later when you're not looking. So like if at one point you wanted to build a factory and you didn't have enough developed tiles to totally fill it out on developed tiles, it'll cost you more to build and then it'll be costing you more to maintain than if it was on fully developed tiles. But eventually the planet will develop the tiles that are underneath where you put this building and it'll eventually get cheaper to build or cheaper to maintain as long as there's enough population to up the tile development. There we go, that's done. So now my home world can send stuff far and wide with cheap cost. I want this guy. That'll help me out a lot. Man, the Hunan have just swarmed to this galaxy. And just as I thought, the poor little Nilly most likely destroyed their mothership because they don't know that they're supposed to protect that. Oh no, they've still got a mothership. It's right here. I guess they just aren't very good at expanding either. Let's see if they went this way. This guy. Let's get some more influence. Another major disadvantage of being the mono is that when you, well, that and of being able to terraform at the same time is that by turning all of my <coughs> food and water planets into Mark I resources, I'm making my territory look like even more and more of an appealing target for the enemy to want to conquer, because as they, you know, conquer the rest of the galaxy, they're gradually going to have more food and water than they have planets to export them to. So they'll want more Mark 1 and Mark 2 resources to export their food and water to. And then they'll be like, oh, there's so many Mark 1 resources over here. Because I've terraformed everything into them. But hopefully by the time they get done fighting each other, I'll have plenty of defenses and a couple super ships to defend myself with. Put the arcology over here on this guy. Oh. Interesting. 
intriguing. So that's going to really up my defensive power. Okay. Got some extra pops here. But now that I'm not at war anymore, I'll send this guy back out to fight. Some defense on this planet. Ooh, planet generator. Might as well make use of that. Ooh, plastic. Nice. Fey have that, so three different empires have the four different pieces of the Revenant. So don't have to worry about that getting created for a while, hopefully. Somebody must have used a star generator over here, or else my dudes would have automatically scouted that a while ago. for another attitude. Help me out a bit. <clears throat> Go with materialism. Invest some money into that. The colony ship things useless to me. Extra special funds. The borrowing penalty removed. Reducing the labor cost to build orbitals and stations. But then also, tier two and higher resources give extra pressure by two. That'll be nice. Almost to this extra asteroids thing. That'll be nice. Oh yeah, level 3 of progressive gives you additional research points whenever you spend FTL points. So that's nice for the mono, because they have to use FTL to teleport people all over the place. Eight times veteran C, six times. I'll have to start thinking of making a design to turn them into. Ah, that bastard brought in a mainframe. The Hunan are interesting tactically to play as, because these mainframes they start with and can build are very important to their military. Any ship that's within range of their mainframe has its attack power doubled, 
but if it's outside the range of a mainframe, their attack power is halved. So being in or out of this range of mainframe is a four times difference to their fleet strengths. Of course, the downside is that the mainframe itself is incredibly slow moving and has not very much attack power relative to an actual ship. So depending on the amount of research you have, it can be very easily taken out. got antimatter so I could end up easily murdering his face potentially he's coming for me anyway so I'll attack and see how it goes past each other. Like a bunch of dips. These guys don't have very good engines, so he's Tokyo drifting out to the end of the universe. Ooh, so close. Antimatter cores are dangerous to have because the core hex itself has only 1.5 health regardless of the size of the ship or any technologies you've researched and there it went and if the core of an antimatter generator is destroyed the ship explodes regardless of anything else Port. I took this guy's energy. Those guys. Okay, okay. So now it's max is 17, actually. Oof. Way the hell over pressure because of this Mark III resource. You are going to need a few mega cities. A few, indeed. Uh, who's got extras? You've got a few extra pops. Named a flagship. Mm. Keep building more population. Get some defense going. So I have at least a few f ships floating around every planet, that'll be good. Uh, nine and seven. Probably be a good idea to retrofit them now. So I'll have to make a design for them to retrofit into. Pause the game and do that now. That'll probably be the last thing I do in this episode. Alrighty, let's wipe the slate clean. Where is that one again? Clear the design. 
and let's start again. I'll make it a destroyer, because destroyers are awesome. I'll give it a control computer, because those are cool. They require a lot of power to run, but for the first 30 seconds of combat, it increases the strength of the ship. So it'll give you a real good early fight advantage. Just make a little one. So don't want it to use up too much freaking power. A good way to increase the survivability of your ships is to have multiple bridge units and to make it so that they're not on the same line as each other. So that uh, so they can't get killed by a single well-placed missile. Give some supply. Give some good engines, because I like my ships being able to boogie on fast. Especially if it's a lone contender, like destroyers are. Destroyer hull is really powerful because it gives you additional hexagon space for the ship design, and it increases the speed of the ship. Oh, minimum size 300 though, so I have to upsize this guy. The downside to a destroyer though is that they are not allowed to use support command. A destroyer cannot have fleet ships with them. They're just a lone wolf going off, killing stuff. Get some extra engine units in case one gets taken down, it'll still at least be able to move. Main engine, some side engines. Alright, now we need some power. Have a couple of power units so that they don't, if one gets taken out, it'll still be able to function. And now for weapons and armor. Flak batteries are good for destroyers because it has a lot of damage against fleet ships. The downside being that they're only able to fire at fleet ships. They don't have a firing arc either, which is pretty sweet. couple of those, one on each side. There's no firing arc, but I like to make them point outward anyway, just for what looks official. Some rail guns out front. I like to make my ships symmetrical, just because I'm obsessed, but what can you do? Eh, no, I'll change it up. This guy's going to be, he's going to have to be able to focus fire, kill the enemy very quickly so that he doesn't get overwhelmed by fleet ships. I think, what was the copy command? Hold shift, hold control to duplicate, there we go. Hmm. That's a fridge. It's not letting it work. Oh well.
got a bit of extra power. So we'll fill out the laser a bit more. Oh, well, that's the max for my interior space. So I don't need as much power as I've got. We'll replace some of this with the laser. Well, not all of it. Some of that one. That's a lot more to the edge. So now for armor. Ooh, that's tempting. Might get rid of some of the laser. Or maybe a little bit of these. Nano mesh is awesome. They always take up interior space though. So I'll need space to put them, but they don't technically exist so the guns can shoot through them and they increase the health of every hex that's directly touching it. So putting those, one of those in the middle of a patch of armor is good and putting them right next to your weapons is good because it increases the health of the actual weapon command hex. So it's harder for the enemy to take out your guns. Move this back, free up a few spaces. Oh, whoops. Now I've got five of these I can use. Where did that go? So we'll put one in front of each of these, maybe to the side. Curse you, symmetry. I give two of them to every weapon. Could put some neutronium armor. Strategically place it so that it doesn't interfere with the firing arcs of the weapons. Neutronium armor is heavy as balls though, so I don't want to use too much of it. Just use it to defend the actual weapons. Oof. that. Some reactive armor to protect the bridge points. So the bridges should be well protected. And it happened to give some protection to the energy cores as well. Uh, starting to get pretty heavy though. But if this guy's going to be lone wolfing it, he's going to need all the armor he can get. Unfortunately.
double layer it a little bit up front. Getting pretty slow. think that's... we'll see how this design performs. And we'll go from there. Its main goal is going to be to rush in, kill the enemy capital ship, and then leave. It shouldn't have to deal with fleet ships too much, just have these to sort of defend itself from getting swarmed. See how it goes. Oh yeah, and that's the other thing about these nano meshes. They stack. So this piece of armor is touching two nano mesh. So its health has been massively increased. But anyway. So hopefully that'll help it survive. We'll see how it goes. Center it, because I'm obsessed. Save the design. And next time we can retrofit these guys. So, see you guys next time.